very much, Ken Corla. It's um, an honour for me this evening to express my full confidence in my friend and colleague, Deputy Simon Coveney. I first met Simon 23 years ago, canvassing for him in the Cork South Central by-election, following the tragic death of his father, Hugh. I know nobody more committed to public service than he. Since then, he's served with distinction as a member of this House, a Minister and a member of the European Parliament. We were both appointed to the Cabinet in 2011, and Simon subsequently served as Minister for Agriculture, for Defence, for Housing, for Foreign Affairs and Trade, and now as Minister for Foreign Affairs and Defence. He has always put the long-term interests of the Irish people ahead of any short-term political considerations. He is a reservoir of patience and kindness, and always has his eye on the big objective, whether it's the CAP negotiations and defending the rights and needs of farmers, programme for government negotiations, that government of Fine Gael independence would never have happened were it not for he. Negotiations with parties in Northern Ireland are ongoing negotiations in relation to Brexit. He is diligent, knowledgeable, sincere, supportive and loyal. And on the toughest days and at the toughest times, I've been fortunate to have him as a government colleague and deputy. Simon is someone with a deep commitment to human rights and he's put that commitment at the centre of our foreign policy, whether it's in the Middle East, Afghanistan, or in the Mediterranean during the refugee crisis. We made mistakes when it came to the proposed appointment of former Minister Catherine's opponent, Special Envoy, and he and I have acknowledged and apologised for our mistakes in that regard. There does, however, need to be some balance. Sinn Féin knows full well that without Simon Coveney's tireless and endless work that he put in with the parties in Northern Ireland and the British government, there wouldn't have been new decade, new approach, and DNA, as, as people call it. Without him, Michelle O'Neill would not be the Deputy First Minister today, and there would not be an executive in Northern Ireland. He put back together, Ciancorla, he put back together, Ciancorla, the executive Sinn Féin collapsed in a tactical act of arrogance, leaving Northern Ireland without a voice, a voice for three years during the Brexit negotiations. He deserves their thanks and their respect, not their opprobrium. Sinn Féin knows the work that he put in to ensure there was no hard border on our island. Yet they seek tonight to hound an honourable man out of office for cheap publicity and political gain. In politics, we will always have disagreements and debates, but there also needs to be a sense of proportion and balance. If everything is a disgrace or a crisis or a scandal, well, then nothing really is. As this House returns, we will face discussions on big issues, like the new National Development Plan, on health, on housing, on climate, and Budget 2023, to name but five. Surely on our first day back, this is what we should be focusing on. And I believe it's what most people want us to focus on. Only Sinn Féin feels differently. Simon leads our government's efforts on the UN Security Council and the continuing discussions around Brexit and the protocol. Is it seriously being suggested that it's in the interest of this country that he be removed at this crucial time? It was the government of which Simon and I were members that reformed the process by which public appointments were made, running them through the past system. We see elsewhere in this island what happens when, when a system like that is absent? We brought in legislation to regulate lobbying and a very clear, very clear, very clear definition as to what lobbying is and what it is not. And also, we brought in legislation to protect whistleblowers. We ended the link between big money and politics, effectively banning corporate donations and donations of big money from, in, from wealthy individuals. Only one party in this House, Sinn Féin, flouts this law in spirit and perhaps in letter, by rooting its grubby millions through the United States and the United Kingdom. No other party does that. We know Sinn Féin collects and retains and perhaps even deletes data on its abuse system without the consent of the data subjects. We know from the, from the RHI inquiry how Sinn Féin ministers handle confidential government documents and records. And we know that when it comes to public appointments in Northern Ireland, that Sinn Féin operates an international centre of excellence when it comes to cronyism. I do not make these points to understate the mistakes that were, that were, that were made, but rather, but rather, rather, Count Corla, I make them, I, I think the interruptions and the curse words are indicative of, of the fact that the truth really hurts Sinn Féin. Truth really hurts Sinn Féin. Really hurts Sinn Féin. So, so I, I repeat, Count Corla. I repeat, Ciarán Corla, the mask slips as well when it's not on. So I repeat, Ciarán Corla, I do not make these points to understate the fact that mistakes were made, nor to avoid accountability for them. 
but rather to ask for balance and proportionality. Sinn Féin doesn't meet its own standards as a political party or as a government in the North. If we can't have confidence in Simon Coveney, how can we possibly have confidence in Deputy Pierce Doherty, their treasurer who's responsible for all their financial affairs, or in Minister Conor Murphy, the only politician on this island who's been found by an independent bodily body to have acted with a degree of cronyism and sectarianism in a public appointment, and yet he still serves in office today. And how could we possibly have confidence in the person who presides above it all and turns a blind eye to it all, Deputy Mary Lou MacDonald? Yeah.